This is just one of those things you do. Putting a one face in your camera in a vice. This is one of the wrongest things I have ever done in my entire life. Alright, I've ground off the worst of the rough spots and straight glass fibres and well this is not looking very pretty it does seem to be sturdy enough I seem to have managed decent plastic welds when I can flex that bottom plate without it breaking off so that's easily going to handle uh, many insertions into the camera Excellent, sir. I think we're ready for a test assembly. <laughs> Exciting. All right. Well, that's pretty much it assembled. Uh, just basically, there's nothing at all holding this part on in the on the right hand side there. So, hence the tape. So here we go. Is that not absolutely beautiful? It fits perfectly. And it's on there pretty well, even though it's barely assembled. Oh, that's not bad. That is not bad. This is going to turn out excellent. Now we just need to wait for the cells to arrive, and we'll be good to go. Ha! It's looking like one of those fancy giant DSLRs from the early 2000s, like a Canon 1D. Just missing a floppy drive. Alright, it's now been about a month since the last filming of this project, and all manner of exciting things have happened during that time. Uh, this camera's been in for warrant repair for three weeks. I've entirely ruined this little charging adapter, and I've got plenty of lithium cells sitting around for me to play with. So what's going on is uh, I've pretty much decided on using these cells, uh, these are uh, 3 amp hour, I've tested them, they're pretty decent, this, this, this is the worst one at 2.84 uh, and uh, these are going to go in the battery grip making it a 6 amp hour battery. Uh, I am going to use the protection circuit from this little cheapo battery which you crapped out the uh, cells are very unevenly charged, so this tested out at about 0 0.3 amp hours, so it's a piece of crap, cost about $7 or so. And I'm just uh, working on mounting the uh, charging port on this thing, and I've just uh, taken out the uh, aperture setting button and put the DC plug from a cheap old USB hub in there, and that's going to turn out rather well. This plug I've got here is a bit dicky, it's a bit bigger than it really should be, but 
it will be decent for the time being. The goal of this project uh, in the long term is to have it uh, be USB rechargeable in due time. However, uh, due to the form factor, that's a rather tall order. Because uh, when we put this thing together, uh, the entire bottom part of this is going to be full of lithium cells, and uh, the entire left portion of this is full of this uh, a tripod mounting mechanism. You can barely even squeeze a wire underneath there. So the only space we've got for electronics is in here, and to some very minor extent inside of the pillar here, but uh, that would be rather ugly since it would have to be external sitting where the battery door is supposed to go. So, uh, for a first revision, since I don't have any suitably small DC to DC boost converters sitting around, uh, I'm just going to have this charge from an 8.4 volt uh, CCCV uh, charger, which, conveniently, my old uh, Canon uh, 1000D charger is. So I've taken this thing apart, I'm uh, going to mount a, uh, some kind of power outlet onto this. It's uh, a bit cramped, I'm not sure which type of connector I want to use. I obviously don't want to use uh, micro USB or USBs on this since it's too high a voltage, uh, but uh, I'll figure something out. Uh, at some stage I'm also going to repair my 1000D, so I also don't want to ruin this uh, battery holder since, uh, well, there's going to be a battery going in there as well. Uh, only concern I've got about this is uh, this is not uh, powered from some standard switch mode IC, but rather a little microcontroller. So this could, uh, if we're unlucky, uh, have some kind of timer in it uh, that it will not charge a battery that's much larger than the original one amp hour battery that's supposed to go in this charger. But uh, if that's the case, I'll just use a cheapo Chinese charger instead. It's no big deal. Mechanically, this uh, battery grip is turning out really, really well, as you saw just a moment ago. Uh, I've just taken the time to uh, cut the battery uh, holder apart to make this little door, which uh, will seat very nicely on the end here without having to have the actual battery holder in there. And I'm going to have to create some kind of little mount to go down here, perhaps just a screw or something, because this will uh, fall out with abuse otherwise. But uh, all in all, this thing is going to look pretty stock from the outside, and uh, uh, it's exciting, very exciting. Uh, so the next step I'm going to do is to see if I can salvage uh, this little protection circuit from uh, this trashy battery. I, I'm i not going to take apart the original battery for the camera just yet. I want to kind of proof of concept this whole thing before actually delving in and using a Canon battery. Uh, also, uh, since this uh, battery uh, grip is going to be installed pretty much all the time, since it can be charged through the charging port, uh, it, uh, there will, it's no real need to take the battery pack off ever. And uh, that means that I'll never ever see the battery uh, nag screen. Which brings us on to a note about this. I believe I mentioned this in the... Uh, some video I've made on this camera, I will hope I've published it, if not I'll have to dig some footage out to see. Uh, but uh, when I got this and tried it with a lab paint supply, this was drawing 60 milliamps when it was powered off. And I was just going, oh great, that's probably something to do with me using a non-original battery and they just want to fuck you over with it. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case because it was also emptying the original battery. Uh, and uh, it, during the three weeks there that this thing's been sitting in uh, Canon Finland's uh, warehouse, they've actually had it apart. You can see some witness marks on the screws, uh, and they replaced some internal component, and it is no longer draining of a battery overnight, which is very, very good. And here's a quick look at the uh, internals of the pirate battery and the little protection circuit it came with, and. Both of these parts actually look surprisingly decent to me. Uh, the build quality of this uh, protection circuit is really rather good. The soldering's decent. The components, uh, the, the big ones, say labeled 8205G, 6G, 2G, and the tiny, probably double MOSFET is labeled 20CB, uh, K607. Uh, and uh, this is a working circuit, as I've seen it in action. It cuts off at uh, about uh, 5 volts, which is just fine. 
So I think it'll do very well for our purposes. And the cells in the battery, uh, these do not look like your typical uh, Chinese bags. In fact, they look a lot like the cells uh, in my original Canon battery for, for my 1000D, which is very surprising. So I'm wondering if these are actually like uh, recycled, genuine camera batteries or something. They, they, they just look better than uh, you, you wouldn't usually see in a cheap little battery like uh, the uh, 9 volts, uh, 9 volt uh, pa batteries we've taken out apart, which are pretty similar in construction, are uh, nowhere near this good looking. Hmm. These cells can probably do decent if I actually take the time to balance them out. Uh, one is just sitting at 3.5 volts now, while the other is at 4 volts, which is why the, the, this battery hasn't worked. They're just incorrectly charged. That doesn't matter. We've got bigger cells. All right, I've now epoxied the uh, DC inlet uh, onto the uh, case, and while we're waiting for that to cure, I figured we'd assemble the actual cells. So, these are the cells I'm going to use. Uh, I've got uh, it, there's uh, obviously four of them. Uh, in this tank, we've got one which I've tested at 3.01 amp hours and one at 2.84. And in this one, we've got uh, one at uh, 3.03 and one at 2.8. Uh, and that means that uh, uh, this one's going to be uh, 5.83 amp hours and this is going to be 5.85 amp hours at uh, 420 milliamps, which is remarkably uh, identical. It's a very, very evenly distributed capacity, which is a very good thing for serious cells. Uh, so these are uh, protected cells, they have got a little protection circuit there. I'm not going to remove that because I don't think it's going to be any detriment of the low currents we're looking at. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, cut these leads short and uh, solder them together in parallel so we essentially get two cells and uh, tape them up with uh, plenty of this giant Capiton tape I've ordered. I'm going to individually package each of the cells uh, in the, in the ta tape and then wrap them together because I don't trust whatever coating these have. In case there's some connection to either a positive or, neg or the negative terminal uh, going to the case of a cell and you have a little breach in the plastic coating, you could end up with a very bad situation. So better safe than sorry. And there's the finished pack. So I've uh, wrapped every cell with uh, the super big Capiton tape, just one, one turn going from end to end on either side. And uh, then I've taped them together, two and two, you can see, just with a little tiny link there uh, to keep them together while uh, cropping the leads. And uh, then I soldered the protection circuit on. Uh, then they're, they're, of course, connect connected with the negative there, the positive there. So we've got the... 7.44-ish volts across there, and uh, this is the middle part of the cell, so this is uh, a 4.2-ish volt uh, point uh, for uh, monitoring the uh, cell balance, of course. So we've currently got no voltage coming out of the uh, output of this protection circuit. However, you usually need to uh, connect a charger before these ever activate, so I have arranged 8.4 volts ish coming out of these probes that are just connected to a lithium battery charger. So, if we connect these to these terminals, we should then be able to measure 8.4 volts coming out of this. So, fingers crossed, here we go. And were we successful? Yes, we were. So, this is now a functioning, working battery pack for a Canon 800D. We just need to adapt that into the uh, case and we'll be good to go. All right, this is really starting to take shape now. So I have uh, soldered in the battery pack to the DC connector. So this is all hot now. We've got our lithium power at our disposal. And uh, from the DC power jack, I've just soldered in the leads which are going to go up into the a battery adapter onto onwards to the a camera body. Since uh, the charging and uh, discharging go through the same pins, it's just fine to do that. But also gives us the extra cheaty functionality of actually being able to use this as an 8.4 volt power pack 
if, if I, for instance, want to hook it up to my old Canon 1000D, I can just make an adapter cable from here to there and have this giant battery as an external to that. No problems. So, uh, I have uh, attached a bunch of uh, cut up uh, pool noodles here, just to foam padding to make everything friction fit rather well. Uh, there's a pretty thick piece on the bottom here because we've got this giant tripod mount still, uh, which I of course do not want to get rid of. But uh, really, uh, all that's left here is a final assembly. So I haven't actually tried to see if this at all fits. Uh, it should be very snug, but it should go together. Oh yes. Fits like a glove. That's a beautiful lithium sandwich. The foam does a decent job, very decent job padding that to prevent damage from the uh, tripod mate. I don't think that's going to be an issue because we've clearly got a fair amount of slack in there, which is very good. And uh, it should have decent clearance. Well, it should have clearance on the this axis as well. Uh, it's very tight, very tight indeed, lengthwise. Since yeah, the, these camera grips uh, are, are rather uh, narrow as far as uh, lithium packs are concerned of this size anyway. So I have abused the fact that we've got this big trigger hole here, uh, which is, is actually housing this little mess of wiring going to a protection circuit, uh, since uh, that would actually not even fit uh, in the uh, actual hand grip section. And we've also got some foam in there. So here we go. Will it, will it go together? It's tight, very tight. But that is a seal. That is an assembled clamshell. Now I'm going to have to kind of uh, just squeeze this in uh, in order to fit the battery door. But I think. I think this might actually work. Come on. Oh yeah. That fits. I'll listen to that. It is solid. This is a solid lump of lithium power. Which isn't on fire yet. Oh. <laughs> Just look at that. Oh, beautiful. I have to cover these holes up with something. Ah, this is fantastic. So now I've just got to uh, wire this up. Uh, I actually had to uh, cut a piece of plastic on the underside off here uh, because it was interfering with the DZ plug. But this should also just uh, fit quite perfectly on here. Yeah, once I get the wire routed properly. Perfect. First try, and there we have it. A battery grip for the ages, fully assembled. I've checked the polarity quite a few times in order to prevent the destruction of a camera. And this should be ready to go. So the final steps I did, uh, I mounted the Top cap here, uh, just the positive and negative, none of the middle connections I use because I think the camera just ignores them unless you're using a Canon proper battery. And I've shoved some uh, uh, foam in, into the little cr nooks and crannies also in here uh, just to prevent stuff from moving around. So the thing remains solid. Uh, reattaching this outer rubber thing was a a major pain since it's just a double sided tape and I'd stored it in a bag and half of a bag had gotten stuck to the adhesive and it's not coming off so I'm gonna this, this stuff is gonna fall off soon enough but I'll have to fix that when the time arrives 
And beyond that, I just uh, hot glued the end cap on. It sh doesn't have to come off ever, really, since you never actually swap for batteries in this. So it's no big deal. It's probably going to come off in some time, and I'll have to figure out a better solution. But for the time being, this being a bit of a prototype and all, it'll be just fine. So, beyond that, there's just one modification to be done to the actual camera, and that is to defeat the battery hatch uh, switch, because the switch for the 760D is in a different place. So. Uh, this uh, setup doesn't have a proper switch. What I've done is just shove a piece of foam in there so it thinks the battery cover is always closed. Makes no difference at all. So, battery hatch is going to go in the uh, original box for this camera because I don't think I'm going to be using this for quite some time. And we are ready to give this a go. This is it. It's taken months to get to this stage, but I think we might have a winner. It's alive. No, continue use. It made a little snap sound when I <laughs> when it made a connection that uh, could be due to the battery switch. Perhaps that's actually a hardware switch. Hopefully we didn't blow the camera again. That would be bad. But we'll see. It's at least going to take more than one day to completely discharge this pack. The Van Guinness is going to take more than one day to recharge it. Ah. Beautiful. Six amp hour battery grip. Ha! <laughs> That's better than anything you could buy in a store. Shame we don't get any battery indicator because Canon are dicks. On the old 1000D, I'd actually get a battery indicator on a pirate pack. But that's a minor thing. In some future revision, I might actually uh, put some kind of indicator on on the uh, pack to get, make it work better. Ah, beautiful. Well, there you go. All I've got left to do is build the charger and then this thing is going to be good to go until the cheap Chinese lithium cells crap out. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio. Holy crap, -er. 35 hours ago I put this thing to capture a time lapse of a clock and a candle and we're not even under 7 volts in the battery yet so this is gonna run for another probably 5 hours or so at least Jesus I just wish I hadn't used a good tripod for it